Muskin, Imam Amir al Mu'minin, used to have a companion called Dirar al Kinani. Dirar al Kinani was one of the close companions of Mawla. When he had traveled to Sham, Muawiyah asked to see him. When Muawiyah saw him, Muawiyah had this habit, which is a very normal habit, by the way. When you're jealous of someone, you always want to inquire about how successful they're doing at that moment. Never forget that. Because they live rent-free in your head. It happens even in this community. You may have someone, he doesn't like you, but he's always asking, so where's he lecturing these days? Because you, you end up living rent-free in their heads. In front of you, of course, they're smiling. And behind you, they could stab you. Muawiyah is an interesting one. Because as much as Mawla was far from him, he'd always ask about Mawla. What's he doing? What's he saying? Where's he going? Jealousy, as Mawla used to say, envy devours faith like fire devours wood. When you have hasad against someone, you can't take their success. So you look for their flaws. The problem is, what flaws does Ali have? There are no flaws. So when Muawiyah would meet some of Mawla's companions, he would either ask them about him while he was alive, or even after Mawla died, Muawiyah lived for 20 years after Mawla died, Muawiyah would still have Ali live rent-free in their heads. It's like on social media, the more people tweet about you, the more you live rent-free in their heads. They can't live without knowing how powerful you are. So they live, you live rent-free in the keyboard warrior's mind. So what happens with, Muawiyah is that at this time, there were these warriors as well. Muawiyah at that moment, what does he do? He asks Dirar al-Kinani, describe Ali ibn Abi Talib to me. Muawiyah knows what Ali ibn Abi Talib is, but he burns from hearing about his greatness. Dirar al-Kinani turned around and he said to him when he turned around, He said to him what? He said to him at that moment when he turned around, he said to him that make sure you describe to me. Dara said, I'm not interested in description. I don't want to describe. Please don't let me describe. So at that moment, Muawiyah again said, no, no, please describe Ali to me. Dara al-Kinani remembers this moment. He says, one night in the mosque, and it was, the niche of the mosque which he used to love. He was standing there, holding his beard, crying in the niche of the mosque. And he was weeping over his grief, as groaning at the same time, as if somebody had what? As if somebody, as if a snake had bitten him. Okay? Listen to this scene. There are says, Ali was weeping over grief, as if a snake had bitten him. He was holding his beard and the tears were coming down. I then heard him say the following lines. Oh world, oh world, get away from me. Why do you present yourself to me? Are you eager for me? Deceive another person, not me. As many opportunities, but you'll never be able to impress me. I have divorced you three times, for which there is no return. Why does Imam Ali say, I have divorced you three times, for which there is no return? As you know in Islam, if you divorce somebody three times, then you cannot come back to marrying them. The Shia differ from other schools on Islam on the application of this three. The number three is agreed upon. In non-Shia world, some of the schools, what do they say in the non-Shia world? They say that if someone says to you, Taliq, 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 that means that that's it. You can never marry that person again. And therefore, you'll find some non-Shia, literally, when he's angry with the missus, what does he do? You know what? You've made me so angry. Taliq, Taliq, Taliq. And then she's looking at him. He's looking at her. And they're thinking, you know what? Three-time divorce, I can't come back unless she goes to marry someone, finish with that person, and then come back to marrying this person again after divorcing that person. For us, no, 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 Baba, relax. No, no, you don't need to. For us, I divorce you, and then afterwards, we can still get married again if we decide to come back. 
and we could divorce again and decide to get married again and a third time of course after then then we cannot come back with one another therefore when Imam Ali says I have divorced the dunya three times there is no return to it why would Imam Ali السلام, be so scathing of the dunya because when you're saying that I've divorced someone three times that's normally a missus that you never want to go back to again in your life you two have had enough tiffs you, it's more than enough signs that this relationship is over. <clears throat> Mola says, I want to divorce dunya in this way. For what reason? Because remember in Nahj al my law of Nahj al Imam Ali in Nahj al whenever Imam is talking about any issue, then always remember one thing. He is referring to the context of what's happened to Islam since Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa has died. In other words, whoever has become Muslim, whoever has ruled Islam after the Prophet has died, Mawla will talk about what they have done and how he wants nothing to do with that. What do we mean? Just before him, who was Khalifa? Uthman bin Affan. When Uthman bin Affan was Khalifa, unfortunately, what happened? Those companions of the Holy Prophet, peace be upon his family, dunya had taken over them completely. What are the signs that dunya had overtaken them? What were the signs? Number one, that they always want their name at the front of any project that's done. Don't say Muslims have done it. Say Talha done it. Don't say the Muslims have done it. Say Zubair is the one who completed it. Don't say the Muslims built it. Say, for example, this companion is the one who has done it. Whenever you want to see how dunya has affected you is when you are someone who has been at the receiving end of what? Chasing a title that in a few days your name's going to be six feet under the ground. Yes? When you want to see if you've been affected, you'll see two types of people. One type will say, look, you don't need to put my name there. I really don't mind. As long as the Muslim community is growing, that's all I care. Then you'll get another type. No. Our way or the highway? If you follow our worldview, then you're one of us. But if you follow another worldview, then we're going to finish you. That person, dunya has taken him. Why? Because if he realized that dunya is so short, what does Mawla say in that sermon? The life of dunya is so short. Its importance is so little. Habibi, you're fighting with each other about whose name should be at the front of the community, of the religion of Islam in the time of Uthman. In a few moments, you're going to be buried under the ground. Why make enemies in one community with one another? Why not work together? Why not say salam to one another? And that resulted in Talha Zubair fighting him in the Battle of Jamal. Do you know the Battle of Jamal, what it was about? It was a battle over dunya, nothing else. You had one man who had detached himself from the dunya that he said, Wallah, this khalafa of yours, what's it worth? <laughs> the sneezing of a goat, this is your leadership. Whereas you had others, the most important thing for them, if we are not khulafa, then make us governors. And if you don't make us governors, then we'll come and destroy you. Don't think Islam of today is too far, by the way. Islam of today in the community is not too far. That president is my friend. Yes. Has he acknowledged me in the announcements of the mosque? Yes, wallah, I know presidents who put names and announcements not because of their love for the person, but to wear off the evil of the person. Allahu Akbar.